Hey guys, I hope you liked that video. Please like and subscribe to my YouTube and Instagram channel to follow me, to follow all my new video posts and to, I guess, follow all my adventures in general. So I do want to talk a little bit about Montserrat. It's a, it's a beautiful place, you know, from, you see, from what you've seen in the videos. And it's an excellent getaway. Um, but it does take a little level of planning and so I just want you guys to be aware of a few things. So the first thing is um, to, to go to the España station, which is a major train station. It's pretty large and it's a little confusing. The signs could be a little bit better, but I recommend getting there early and figuring out how you want to get there beforehand. So there's two ways of getting up there. One is by a cable car system and one is by, by a tramway. Depending if you feel comfortable with heights or if you <clears throat> would rather be closer to the ground, you can kind of figure out how you want to get there. We took the cable car, which is what you saw in the video, and it was beautiful. And I recommend you do that because you get to see beautiful views of the mountain ranges and just the nearby countryside. And it's an awesome, it's an awesome uh, experience within itself. So figure out how you want to because you can buy the tickets many ways. You can either buy it one by one as you kind of go through every single thing from the from Espana train station to Manresa, Manresa through uh, you know, a cable car, cable car back down. So I recommend that you buy everything and you figure it out at the train station because you can buy one complete round trip with everything included and it's just less stress for you and all you have to do is fall into line and there's a lot of tourists, a lot of people. So it's best to be less stressed and to just go through it one by one to buy everything at the same time. So figure out what you want to do, buy it beforehand and it's a beautiful one hour train ride and you get to just enjoy and get out of the big hustle and bustle of the city. So recommend that you go and you do a little planning in terms of what you want to, how you want to get there. So when you do get to the Basilica and it's a lot to take in, there's a lot to see and do and the beautiful architecture and statues and, and things to see and do. So definitely take your time, walk around, take yourself in into the views. But once you get into the church and you explore more of the area, you'll see, depending what time of the day that you go to, there are some long lines to see certain attractions. And the main attraction in this church is the um, the Black Virgin of Montserrat and her infant son. And so there is a line to get in through there and you go through a whole bunch of corridors before you actually get to the statue itself. And um, some people, <clears throat> you know, prayed and did their thing. And I think some people touch a statue, but if you're not interested or um, you, if you're not interested, you can actually turn around and you get this beautiful view of the church while you are up there. So definitely worth falling into line if you need to go into there and just seeing what that back end of the church looks like. So another activity you could do while you're at Montserrat and visiting the church and a lot of the other religious areas is to go hiking. As you notice, one of the first things you see there is a large mountain range, the Montserrat mountain range. And it's, it's, uh, it's, it's beautiful and it just extends as far as the eye can see. There's a lot of trails that you could take to go up there and they all start kind of at the base at one end of the church. I'm going to show a map of that specific area and where the trails start. And you pretty much start in one location and you branch off into different trails. The main one is the Sant Jerome or Geroni, which is St. Jerome. And it's the highest peak in and around that area. And it takes about three hours round trip to, to get from the base and up there and back down. But I'm sure you're going to spend a lot more time, you know, exploring the area while you're over, while you're already over there, but it offers the best 360 degree view of the beautiful countryside while you're out there. We didn't do that we didn't do that specific trail because we didn't come prepared and it was immensely hot over there and we did a shorter trail the Saint Benet trail which took about three hours round trip and I was carrying a backpack and I had all my camera gear and I was probably complaining the whole the whole trip just because it was so heavy and it was so hot but definitely come prepared if you want to go hiking come prepared bring your backpack your water your shoes your hiking sticks and um, I would have Next time I go there, I'll definitely come more prepared and I'll, I'll definitely do the San Gironi <clears throat> uh, trail next time. And one more thing to consider is the fact that there is a fountain over there. I'm gonna, you probably saw um, a video of a guy refilling with water, but there is a fountain with running water. And so there's, if you have a water bottle over there, you can refill and you can go hiking kind of spontaneously while you're out there because it does get pretty hot. So it's great that they offer that. So when you do get there, I want you to be aware that there's various eateries available to you there. When you first get to the, the main church itself, there is a cafeteria and there is a bunch of restaurants. There is a restaurant that overlooks the countryside. So that's, it's pretty spectacular within itself. We went to the cafeteria, got a few snacks to pretty much take us through the day, but the selection is limited. There's a, there's also a small cafe when you do get there. And so the selection is limited and the kind of, 
you know, recommend that you either bring your own food or, or eat when you do get there. But there's also a lot of, um, <clears throat> there's a large gift shop. There's a religious aspect to it, so you can buy rosaries and other kinds of pendants and other, you know, a lot, a lot of other religious types of memorabilia. But there's also food and wine. So a large wine selection, olive oil, and a lot of places, a lot of different candies and treats that you could try. So definitely recommend you spend some time walking around over there and looking around and you know, bring some stuff back home if you really like something. So while we are talking about food, I do want to talk about one thing that I did, I did buy at the gift shop while I was at Montserrat, and then, um, it is the nougat, which looks like this. And I've been waiting three months to eat it, so I'm kind of excited to do it, and I'll do it in front of you. And so um, I'll explain some history on this. So it's called uh, a couple things. It's called turon um, in Spanish, or torone in Italy. And we do have our own Filipino version of this, and it's pretty much made of egg whites and honey and various nuts. And it looks like this when you open it up. Um, it's a it's a it's a candy treat that I used to eat growing up, and my parents always brought to me whenever they went on their travels in Europe. And so I'm, I'm kind of used to it. But it's it's pretty soft and chewy. And um, here it is, and I'll eat and I'll eat it in front of you. This one itself, it's made with with peanuts. And let me try it. <laughs> so it's um, it's more of like a white nougat or a white version of this turon. And there's other versions depending on where you are in where you are in in Europe. And it's mainly eaten and made during the Christmas season, I believe. Someone can confirm that if that's wrong. But in the Philippines, we do have our own little version and it's interesting when you go to colonies um, of Spain because you can see how different the same food is interpreted. And so we have the same thing and I'm going to overlay a photo but it's made with cashew. And so I, you know, I grew up eating these kinds of things and people would come back, back and forth from the Philippines. But I definitely recommend that you do try this while you're out there. It's a good candy, a good treat and a good something that's local and you know pretty much um, made in, in and around that area. So definitely try it out. Man, this is chewy and gooey and oh my God. I can eat this all day, but I should stop. I'm gonna gain a lot of weight eating this, but I can keep eating these all day, every day. So I do wanna say a couple things. So just kind of one more fun fact. So um, I am Catholic and I, I had to, I, I got a, um, I went through the process of confirmation where you kind of reaffirm your faith into the Catholic Church and you get to pick a saint. The saint that I picked was St. Ignatius of Loyola. And um, St. Ignatius actually spent some time in the nearby town of um, Manresa and also some time in Montserrat. And so in his time in the specific area, he spent some time in solitude thinking and praying, which ultimately led to the formation of the um, a Catholic religious order called the Jesuits. And the Jesuits founded my high school in San Francisco, St. Ignatius College Preparatory. So shout out to everyone in St. Ignatius. And it's kind of cool how, you know, the history of someplace far away in Spain kind of relates to my everyday life. But I do want to say is that when you do travel and you check out places like this or churches like this, you really don't have to be religious or Catholic, but it's, it's great to just experience and learn new things and you should always learn, never stop learning and always just appreciate different cultures and people. And that's the great thing about traveling. So I definitely recommend whether you're religious or not, go to places like this because it's beautiful. The architecture is beautiful. And if anything, you just learn a lot about about history, the people, and the architecture of that area. So take care, guys. I hope you enjoy. Watch out for my next vlog, and I will try my best to keep you, you know, giving you guys good quality, good quality videos and vlogs. Take care, guys. Live with Aloha, and don't forget to follow me. Bye, guys.